Hey guys, my name is Savannah and today we are back in Planet Zoo building another little one-off habitat build for the African elephant. And if you've seen it on the channel already, you might be familiar with this exhibit that we're building right now because it was built for my species breakdown video to kind of demonstrate how you can bring a little bit of realism into Planet Zoo when you're building for your animals. The species breakdown series goes over each individual species in Planet Zoo and we talk about animations and enrichment and habitat needs and all the different colorations that you can get of those animals in the game. So if you want to check that out, I think I have three of those so far. There's a lot of species in the game and they take me quite a while to put together, but we've done like the first three species of the Zoopedia so far, with the most recent one being the African elephant. Uh, but here today we are building the exhibit that I used as a demonstration for that video, starting with this building. Now, as per usual, this building has nothing inside of it. It is purely just a facade. And so what would uh, normally be inside this building would be like the back service areas or back holding for the African elephants, somewhere that the keepers could bring them inside, service their feet, check them over, you know, all the kind of stuff that you would need to do when taking care of elephants. Um, this exhibit also only has one yard, one area for the guests to view the elephants. So there might be a lot of shifting that needs to happen for these guys where some of them would need to be brought off exhibit and either other members of a different herd or other individuals put out and rotated depending on who could live with one another uh, or not. So that's kind of what the backstage building, back holding area um, uh, serves a purpose for. So we're gonna work on a lot of details for this, just kind of making it as pretty as I can, even though it's not functional really at all. All it does is hide the entrance to the habitat where the elephants actually come into the front exhibit. But I did go ahead and put this exhibit on the workshop for you guys as a habitat blueprint. So do double check if you download it, it is going to be a habitat. It's got a barrier all the way around it. That way the terrain modifications and things all transfer over when you place it in your own zoo. And I did test it, it does transfer fairly well. So hopefully you guys enjoy it uh, and are able to use it for your parks because I am fairly happy with how it uh, came out. Actually, I shouldn't say fairly happy. I'm really happy with how it came out. Now, in terms of, you know, thinking about realism, I mentioned this a little bit in the species breakdown video, but this exhibit actually potentially would be too small for the amount of elephants that I end up putting in here. Elephants walk a huge amount of miles, uh, very long distances out in the wild, and that's part of what keeps their feet so healthy, uh, wearing down their nails and things like that. And then it's just, it's just a part of their natural history. It's a part of their behavior out in the wild. And in order to replicate that in zoological facilities, there are not many enclosures, habitats that are able to replicate that very well. I'm most familiar with the San Diego Zoo's Elephant Odyssey because I live in San Diego and so I was around when that was first built and it's built as a very elongated exhibit with multiple different shifting uh, yards so that they can put their elephants in different areas and allow them to walk back and forth as much as possible. So if we were looking at this as a real exhibit, it is still on the small side However, you know, for Planet Zoo, I find it difficult to detail and make things look very pretty if they're all kind of stretched out. If you kind of shrink some of the habitats and squish all the details together, you know, things kind of turn out looking a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Many elephant habitats and exhibits in real zoos uh, have lots of just open, muddy spaces. And although that is completely su sufficient for African elephants or other species of elephants, it doesn't look very pretty in a video game. So certain, you know, accommodations need to be made. And uh, that is one that I made for this one. So please do remember, you know, builds here on this channel are 
realism inspired. We are definitely not trying to create one for one replications of what habitats would need to be for uh, real animals in real life. But I do like to take some of that into consideration because I find it very interesting to research the animals and try to do uh, the best I can as sort of a challenge in the game. So with that being said, I do have some elephant information that I want to talk about. This is a longer video-ish. This build took me quite a few hours and the build overall uh, is, or the video overall is about 30 minutes long or so. So I've got a lot of elephant information to go over. So let's jump into it. If you're curious where this information is coming from, I've pulled it up from the National Geographic site. So you yourself can go check it out if you'd like. I'm not going to read it in its entirety, but I'll go over some of the main points and things that I think are interesting. And as always, if the wording is weird, if something needs clarification, or if you have a very interesting African elephant uh, um, fact, let me know down below in the comment section and I would love to hear uh, facts about elephants and other people I'm sure would love to hear facts about elephants. So starting off, what is the African elephant? African elephants are the largest land animals on earth. They are slightly larger than their Asian cousins and can be identified by their larger ears that look somewhat like the continent of Africa. Asian elephants have smaller, more rounded ears. Although they were long grouped together as one species, scientists have determined that there are actually two species of African elephant and both are at risk of extinction. Savannah elephants are larger animals that roam the plains of sub-Saharan Africa, while forest elephants are smaller animals that live in the forests of Central and West Africa. The International Union for the Conservation of Nature lists savannah elephants as endangered and forest elephants as critically endangered. African elephants are keystone species, meaning they play a critical role in their ecosystem. Also known as ecosystem engineers, elephants shape their habitat in many ways. During the dry season, they use their tusks to dig up dry riverbeds and create watering holes many animals can drink from. Their dung is full of seeds, helping plants spread across the environment, and it makes a pretty good habitat for dung beetles too. In the forest, their feasting on trees and shrubs creates pathways for smaller animals to move through, and in the savanna, they uproot trees and eat saplings, which helps keep the landscape open for zebras and other plain animals to thrive. Elephant ears radiate heat to help keep these large animals cool, but sometimes the African heat is too much. Elephants are fond of water and enjoy showering by sucking water in through their trunks and spraying it all over themselves. An animation that actually is replicated in the game. We do go over it in the species breakdown video, but they will. They walk up to water, they suck up a bunch of water in their trunk, and then they spray it over their back. Very, very cute. They also do the same thing with dust, although they don't, you know, they don't breathe the dust in. They, they just gotta pick it up with their trunk and then throw it over their back. Um, same kind of animation though. Afterwards, they often spray their skin with a protective coating of dust. Oh, there you go. I should have kept reading. <laughs> spray their uh, skin with a protective coating of dust. An elephant's trunk is actually a long nose used for smelling, breathing, trumpeting, drinking, and also for grabbing things, especially a potential meal. The trunk also contains 40,000 muscles. African elephants have two finger-like features at the end of their trunk, and they can use these to grab small items. Uh, Asian elephants only have one. Both male and female African elephants have tusks, which are continually growing teeth. Savannah elephants have curving tusks, while the tusks of forest elephants are straight. They use these tusks to dig for food and water and strip bark from trees. Males whose tusks tend to be larger than females also use their tusks to battle one another. Another animation that is uh, actually in the game. When they fight each other, they do push each other around with their tusks and their head. Elephants eat roots, grasses, fruits, and bark. An adult elephant can consume up to 300 pounds of food in a single day. 
These hungry animals do not sleep much, roaming great distances while foraging for large quantities of food that they require to sustain their massive bodies. Yeah, if you think about it, elephants being so, so big and their diet really is not that calorically rich where they're going to be eating, you know, shrubs and leaves and grasses and stuff like that, that really doesn't have a whole lot of substance to it. So having to consume about 300 pounds a day makes a lot of sense because it's hard to sustain such a large animal on such a low caloric food. Uh, and they're also, you know, a mammal. They're warm blooded. They have a metabolism. They need to regulate their own body heat. All of that uh, uses energy and requires the input of food or consumption, I should say, of food uh, to sustain their uh, their life, their body. So it takes takes quite a lot of food. African elephants range throughout the savannas of sub Saharan Africa and the rainforests of Central and West Africa. The continent's northernmost elephants are found in the Mali Sahel Desert. Hopefully I said that right. The small nomadic herd of Mali elephants migrates in a circular route through the desert in search of water. Elephants are matriarchal, meaning they live in female led groups. The matriarch is usually the biggest and the oldest. She presides over a multi-generational herd that includes other females called cows and their young. Adult males called bulls tend to roam on their own, sometimes forming smaller, more loosely associated all-male groups. Having a baby elephant is a serious commitment. Elephants have a longer pregnancy than any other animal, almost 22 months, almost two years of being pregnant 22 months that's insane cows usually give birth to one calf every two to four years well yeah because they're pregnant for two years so they can't give birth any quicker than that at birth elephants already weigh some 200 pounds and stand about three feet tall Lastly, talking a little bit about their threats to survival in their natural environment, poaching for illegal ivory trade is the biggest threat to African elephant survival. Before the Europeans began colonizing Africa, there have been as many as 26 million elephants. By the early 20th century, their numbers had dropped to 10 million. Wow, that's over 50% of a drop. Hunting continued to increase. By 1970, their numbers were down to 1.3 million. So 26 million to 1.3. Between 1970 and 1990, hunting and poaching put the African elephant at risk of extinction, reducing its population by another half. Oh my goodness. In the years since, it, it's crazy to see the, the actual numbers listed out like that. You know, I, I knew that they were under threat. I knew that they needed help. But to see the numbers listed out to go from 26 million to about 600,000 like that, that's a massive drop. Um, and that's crazy. And that's really sad. So hopefully we can uh, we can help them and change things around. In the years since, poaching has continued to threaten both species. Savannah elephants declined by 30% between 2007 and 2014, while forest elephants declined by 60% from 2002 to 2011 as post poaching worsened in Central and West Africa. Compounding the problem is how long it takes for elephants to reproduce. With reproduction rates hovering around 5 to 6 percent, there are simply not enough calves being born to make up for those losses from poaching. African elephants are also losing their habitat as the human population grows and people convert land for agriculture and development. Elephants need a lot of room, so habitat destruction and fragmentation not only makes it harder for them to find food, water, and each other, but it also puts them in an increased conflict with humans. So there you go. Just a little bit of information about the African elephant, uh, both species out in Africa. And uh, I know the San Diego Zoo has a lot of different conservation programs going to help these guys. And they have a bunch of information on their website, too. So if you'd like to check it out, I highly recommend uh, taking a look because it's very interesting. Going back to our build, let me actually catch up because I don't watch the playback when I'm reading that information. So we are building the shelters for them. It looks like we've got the majority of the habitat kind of laid out, the surrounding fence and everything. And I'm working on a really tall metal structure just to give the elephants some shade. 
As we kind of read about in the information, elephants in the wild would be uprooting trees and just being naturally destructive. So a lot of the structures in this exhibit are going to be pretty hefty and beefy in order to sustain uh, their life in the exhibit and not get absolutely destroyed by the elephants. So I'm using lots of metal pieces and things because that would be a lot stronger. And uh, I used that African, no, the Australian rod from the Australian pack and just kind of duplicated it and rotated it like you saw me do, just that way it was a little bit thicker and seemed like it would be a little bit more structurally sound. I was trying to get some sort of enrichment uh, around this. You know, there is a lot of enrichment in African elephant habitats that hangs from a lot of their structures. And then keepers can go in with a pulley system and lower them down and fill them up with hay and treats and things like that and then lift them back up for the elephants to grab, um, you know, using those trunks to bring those things down. But unfortunately in the game, we really don't have a lot of that and I wasn't feeling up to kind of creating a custom piece. So I just went with the rubbing pillar on one of the edges and then I think I throw in like that um, big wooden, I don't even know what you call it, the thing that they push around. So I think we add that a little bit later, but starting to work on their first Pool. We really didn't talk about it in the information. I mean, it mentioned that elephants love water, but making sure that they have lots of space to get in the water and kind of swim around and soak if they're getting too hot uh, and they want to just play around. So this is their first little pool. They can actually go in both of these, but unfortunately, the way that I've built the habitat in between these two little sections where this pool is and then the bigger section where the other pool is, for whatever reason, their traversable area kind of prevents them from going in between. So if you do download this habitat and want to use it, that's something that you might just need to adjust just a little bit uh, because currently they can only use one half at a time. And of course, this is probably only going to be useful for sandbox uh, because it's not going to meet their requirements, especially with four elephants in here. It's quite a lot of elephants for the little space that they have. Um, so just keep that in mind if you do download it that is probably going to work best in sandbox and you're probably going to have to make some modifications for uh, if you're going to use it anywhere else. Finishing off the back of the building is completely plain. So don't look at anything around the back of the building. It's just a plain wall. There's no doors, no details or anything like that. Really, you can use this building and kind of incorporate it maybe into a habitat on the other side, or you can do Asian elephants on the other side where the African elephants are on this side. Uh, you really can kind of make it fit to whatever zoo project you're working in. And I didn't do that intentionally. I'm just coming up with uh, benefits of having it be blank. Really, I just left it blank because I don't like decorating the backs of buildings and I got lazy and I wanted to be done with this. Uh, that is the true reason, but there you go, positives of that. It's now there for you to customize just how you want it to be. And we'll just pretend I did it uh, intentionally. The rest of this build is going to be finishing kind of the details on the outside. I started with this fence that's going to surround basically the entire perimeter of the habitat. Um, and I thought it was a little plain. I really, really like these twilight beams. The wood pieces for this fence, what I'm using are the twilight pieces. And if you ask me outright, you know, Savannah, do you think we should have any more wooden beams in Planet Zoo? I would probably say, no, we have so many, we don't need any more. But then every time Planet Zoo or Frontier adds a new style of beam, I get so excited and it's all I use. So the Twilight one specifically because it's recolorable and because it has just a little bit of texturing to it, I think it's perfect for basically everything. It looks like a nice kind of weathered piece of wood. The corners are a little bit rounded and it has just a little bit more detail on it than like a brand new pristine uh, beam. So I think it turns out really, really nice. And then just duplicating these kind of mud wall pillars. This is really what makes the traversable area in between the two sections so difficult because they can't kind of squeeze uh, between it, which I think is a little silly because to be honest, there is a lot of room. So I think the elephants should be able to squeeze through, but hit boxes for Planet Zoo animals are notoriously large sometimes and uh, they just don't fit. Going back to the fence for just a second, I know I'm kind of bouncing around, but it reminded me 
that one of the pieces that I really do want to see is we have a lot of square 90 degree cut off wood beams and I would really love to see something that's cut off at like a 45 degree angle. It's really common to see in zoo facilities where they have it kind of cut off at a 45 degree angle, like the upright posts. Hopefully you guys know what I'm talking about. And it just adds another little level of detail. Uh, and I wish that we had something like that, kind of like the bamboo piece is that I used for the fence, where those are kind of cut off more at a, at a 45 degree angle and they, uh, look really good, but I want the individual pieces for that. So Frontier, please, <laughs> in your next pack somewhere as a free update. I don't care how it comes. I just would love to have something like that in the game. Here for the edge of the pool, I'm using again these mud pillars and uh, rock pieces. They're actually not mud pillars. They're the faux tree piece. You guys have probably seen this used over and over again because they look really nice as mud walls, but they're really just the faux tree and creating a bit of a barrier between the guests and the elephants in the water. Ideally, you would probably have some sort of hot wire, some other structure in between, and it would probably be a little bit bigger. But the way that I built the pool, I wanted them to have as much water room as possible. And going back to the fact that, you know, it's a video game and I wanted it to look nice and be a little bit more compact. Uh, this is what I thought looked nice and worked for me. Realistically, if you watch the elephants kind of swim over to the edge, they could 100% uh, reach their trunk into the guest area and uh, grab people and things, which is not ideal. So as a realistic standpoint, that would not work uh, and not be good. But for us, it looks nice and I'm happy with how it came out. They would probably also rip all those plants out of the planters because they are within easy access and uh you know that's what they do so just keep that in mind as well but i think that it looks nice adding these little pillars all around just for some detail in the habitat and kind of like a um you know a barrier to keep the elephants away from certain areas uh while still also looking nice now hindsight grass this was something that i wanted to talk about too is I really wanted to put a whole lot more of this, but you know, we're keeping in mind that the elephants are uh, going to be destructive. They're going to pull things up. So you can see that I start by placing a lot of the grass everywhere. And I really wanted to kind of overplant this exhibit, but that's not how it would be. And because this exhibit was being made for a species breakdown video to kind of highlight what an exhibit would look like in real life, um, I decided against it. So instead for detail in this habitat, I throw some rocks everywhere because they're not going to necessarily destroy those. And then we do a little bit of grass planting around the base of the rocks and around the base of the shelters and things like that. Uh, ideally, again, I would love to put the grass everywhere because that buffalo grass that came with the grasslands pack is the best thing ever and I use it in every single build now because I'm obsessed and every build needs to be kind of overgrown with grass everywhere. For some species that would absolutely work but for these guys again it just would not. So I just added a little bit of detailing around everywhere um, and then using this tree this uh, is it the marula tree I think it's called um, is another one of my favorite ones for kind of African or grassland style builds. Because uh, it looks great as a bush. It also looks great as a tree, but as a bush, it looks fantastic. So it's one of my favorite ones to use. Duplicating these shelters twice over here and kind of having them hang over the edge of the enclosure just to try to give a little bit of immersion for the guests, I guess, is if that's the right word. Just kind of make them feel like they're part of the habitat, bringing the habitat out towards them. I think works really well. I also envision maybe it would be an area for a keeper talk where the keeper would stand on the outside of the enclosure underneath the shelter and they could ask, you know, an elephant to do some sort of trained behavior or demonstrate grooming or, or something like that, you know, where they stick their foot through it. The fencing would probably need to be a little bit different if the elephant was going to stick their foot through for something. But that was kind of my idea is that it would be used for some sort of keeper talk or presentation. So I also end up putting an information sign next to each of those shelters just to kind of highlight that um, because we have to take into account you know a lot of zoos mission should be education and teaching people about the animals that they are caring for so i really wanted to make sure that that was incorporated somehow and i think the very last thing that i'm going to do is create like a shade structure viewing area over here 
This exhibit really has a lot of viewing potential, which I think is really cool. I really was keeping in mind the San Diego Zoo's Elephant Odyssey. For that same reason, you can kind of walk all the way down the path and you really can see the elephants from almost anywhere, regardless of where they're at in the exhibit. So I liked that style and that kind of idea. So I really made sure that you could see the elephants from lots of different angles and regardless of where they are in the exhibit, you could probably get a pretty good view for them. So yeah, just starting on this shade structure here, measuring it out, it's fairly simple. It's a bunch of repeating logs. You guys have seen me do this a ton of times, but I do make it two tiered this time, so it's slightly different. But in all reality, it's the same kind of style that I pretty much always build in. Um, you know, tried and true, I build what I like, and this is what I like. <laughs> it fits in really well with the African uh, exhibit. I think I was working off of a reference picture for this one, but I can't quite remember. I definitely was working off a reference picture for uh, the rest of the habitat. But as we finish up here, we only have uh, three-ish more minutes left of the video. There are some end cinematics to kind of show off the habitat uh, for you guys to see the final product. I really hope you guys enjoyed, and if you've made it this far, as always, I'm going to do the YouTube reminder things. Hit the like button, leave me a comment, and of course hit that subscribe button if you're interested in more Planet Zoo content, or Prehistoric Kingdom content, or Jurassic World Evolution content. Uh, that is kind of what we cover here on the channel, and more recently tying in Pokemon and the Switch with some content here on the channel. So if you're interested in any of that, that will be coming to the channel more and more in the near future. You can also follow me on any of my social media pages down in the description. You can find all those links to Twitter and Discord and TikTok and all those kind of things uh, are all down below. We also do have a website where I have some downloadable for free billboards and other images for Planet Zoo creation, as well as a merch shop full of stickers and pins all animal inspired for other animal lovers because that's what I am. So that's what I create and design. So if you want to help support the channel, you can do so by uh, purchasing some stickers or pins, or you can hit that join button below. We have a ton of new members this month. So thank you everyone for joining all the names of our bana banana bunch members, excuse me, that tongue twister, are at the end of the video on my end screen. So thank you to each and every one of you. I think we have 49 right now. So if you also want to be part of the banana bunch, the join button is down below. And that is the end of my uh, YouTube stuff. Here are the end cinematics. How beautiful. I'm really happy with this habitat. And again, I did put it up on the Steam Workshop so that you can use it yourself, something I really need to be better at doing because I'm terrible at <laughs> remembering to do that, but I am trying. So this one is up on the workshop for you guys to use. And if you use it in any of your zoos or you modify it in any way, uh, take pictures and tag me. I would love to see what you guys create with my builds. Um, as always, Discord is always full of people posting pictures of their Planet Zoo projects. But you can also tag me on Instagram or Twitter. Um, I'm always checking uh, both of those constantly, so I will see it. And I try to reply to every single comment on all my social media things just so that I can, you know, talk with you guys and chat. I love doing it. So thank you guys so much for watching. We are almost at the end and I started my outro just a little bit too soon. So here I am just kind of rambling, waiting for the end screen to come up. And you guys get to listen to my voice for uh, just uh, another minute or so. So we're almost there. This is the last cinematic kind of going over the top here and the finished habitat. So thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.